I'm committed to try 100 craft whiskeys throughout 2021. And as the days go by, I'm going, oh crap. That's a lot of whiskey. <laughs> Neat Nation, welcome back, welcome back. We are tasting whiskeys five through eight in my journey to get to 100 craft whiskeys here this year. Uh, last week was pretty swell. Tasted Chattanooga cask strength and three different cask strength releases from the state of Ohio, particularly in the Columbus region. Today I have another blind, actually. So going into this, I don't know what I'm drinking. I have the key right here. And so as needed, I will give it a, a peek, actually, after I've done my evaluations of these four. Again, I'm trying not to be too technical here. The goal is to be comparative and then at the end celebrate the whiskeys that crush and uh, maybe not buy whiskeys that don't crush. I mean, not, not everybody can be awesome early in their career. Like, I wish all craft distilleries were releasing amazing stuff, but, I mean, sometimes we just struggle. So I gotta thank my boy, Matt Pletz, local guy, for hooking me up with these samples today. I mean, many of you uh, amazing squad members from Neat Nation have reached out in effort to help me procure these 100 whiskeys, and that's just amazing. You peeps are swell. So... Thank you so much, Matt, for these, and I am pretty jacked to get into this. We're going, I did A, B, C, D last time, but these are numbered, so we're going one, two, three, four. Uh, a point of, of note uh, and remembrance is that these don't have to be bourbons. They don't have to be rye. I mean, the goal was American distilleries. So when I say craft whiskeys, I really mean craft American distilleries, specifically focused on whiskeys. So blend of whiskeys, fine. Finished whiskey, fine. Gin, no, not gonna do gins. And I know that all of these are whiskeys. So I'm gonna try and evaluate each one of these quickly because I don't want this to be a 30 minute video. So I'll nose and taste on its own, and then once I've made my way through them, I will go back and be like, this one is more of this and that and the other, and blah, 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 blah. All right. So whiskey number one today, whiskey number five for the year. Cheers. Very rye heavy. Reminds me of kind of MGP 95.5 rye. Like, it's, it's a high rye rye. This is what it smells like. Uh, medium amount of age, not crazy young, but a uh, relatively decent amount of alcohol on the nostrils. Not quite enough to curl the nose hairs. I've like lived my life in a constant state of congestion, but it's there. It is not mellow, put it that way. Get a little bit of like Christmassy vibes in the juniper slash piney range. But I get some candy up in there as well. Like minty candy canes. I mean, just adding to the Christmas vibes. Whew. That is, uh, that's intense. Um, I do get candy cane. A lot of heat. Um, very uh, dancing all over my palate. Like I almost tasted it on the roof of my mouth. Olfactory glands are working overtime right now. There's a fruity, there's a fruit party happening in my mouth, but I'm having trouble placing it. So yeah, minty candy cane, rice spice, and some kind of fruit something. It does have a little bit of kind of a sawdusty finish, which I mentioned show up in younger whiskeys. Now this one feels like it's it's getting to maturity. That sawdust is just barely there. In general though, this is pretty solid. This is a good rye. I'm just imagining it's a rye. I can't imagine it being bourbon. I mean, it's that rye heavy, spicy. Okay, I took too long on that one. We'll try and speed it up. 
Much more mellow on the nose. Sweet, nougaty, chocolate and sugar. But very mellow. A little bit of alcohol. Doesn't smell deep. Like I'm not getting oak. At all. Uh, grainy and boring. This tastes like a ride bourbon. A young ride bourbon that just needs more time in a barrel. Proof level, I mean, it's got heat to it, but it's not nearly so hot as number one was. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this one in the 110 to 115, but it's got a youthful exuberance. Whereas this one has got to be 100-ish proof and, and young. So not a lot of flavor, but a decent amount of heat. Not bad, not off-putting. But just a little grainy. Um, no sawdust. And the alcohol, I mean, it doesn't taste like new distillate. So that's good. But it's just okay. This one's got a little more depth to it. Actually picking up some level of age influence, which is refreshing at this point. Just some oak and brown sugar. This also smells like a ride bourbon. Okay, I get some nutty, some peanuts in here. Spicy, but not necessarily rye spice. Um, like it's got a kind of funkiness to it that reminds me of Larceny. So Larceny, weeded mash bill from Buffalo Trace, has a decent amount of spice and funk even though it's weeded. And I just said Buffalo Trace, I didn't mean that. I meant Heaven Hill. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. There is kind of a whiny, uh, maybe even brandy. Like I want to say this one's maybe finished. Like that, that extra layer of, I called it funk, but it may be Finnish influence, is just messing with me a little bit. It, this is sweet. It's sweet and funky and has got some peanuts and some spice, but it's not spicy necessarily in the way that a rye is spicy. I'm struggling to pick up a lot on the nose here too. So initially it smelled like a rye bourbon to me, but it's deeper, it's sweeter than two, but it's not like, oh yeah, it's really apparent what that is. Like one, the nose on one is so big and so wry forward. Two, it's youthful exuberance um, grains. Three is sweeter, but still chill. So, so far guess is barrel proof rye. 100 proof bourbon. Finished bourbon. Fourth and finally for today smells really good actually so i have to smell myself to try and aid my already impaired nostrils to try and pick up as much as i can from this uh sweet caramel sorry i don't have nothing better than caramel right now and i get oak so this one smells like a pretty decently aged bourbon Lots of flavor. Reese's peanut butter cup, oh, like right away. Milk chocolate and peanut butter. This one was kind of nutty, like roasted, salted peanuts. This one is like sweet, creamy, smooth peanut butter and chocolate, which I like that, like that better. Yeah. I mean, this one is, it got to be in that 100 proof range. Drinks relatively easy has enough eat heat and spicy intensity uh while being matched with a flavor intensity that makes me go wow so as i look at these these two are both quite good this one is really good this one is very very full of flavor and high rye um, but the complexity and flavor on this one makes me like mm, i like that there's nothing in this one that i do not like at all shall we find out what they were all right, let's find out what they were. Okay, first one is a rye. 
It is Cat's Eye Obtainium Polish Rye Whiskey. And we are talking about 116 proof. And I have no idea what the mash bill is. But definitely rye. And definitely close to barrel strength, if not barrel strength. So unfortunately, I'm not going to break all these down. But you guys can definitely look them up. So I did see this one at a liquor store. And I hope it's still around because... Really interesting rye experience. It reminds me of um, Redemption 8-Year Rye, uh, which is MGP sourced. Yeah, very, very intense rye. Just that, that rye punch is there. It's not really mellowed out by corn sweetness, but me likey. Me likey that. Big win for that Polish rye from Cat's Eye. I'm learning about these with you guys, so be, bear with me as we break these down. So this is a sourced product, is what I'm reading, what I'm learning. This Polish rye, it's legitimately a Polish rye whiskey. So it's sourced, imported, and then bottled and shipped by Cat's Eye out of Iowa. Uh, yeah, so there's some, there's some good Polish rye out there. Let me tell you guys, this is a really unique product. And if you can you can try it, you should. If you can buy it, you probably should. Really, really nice. Really nice. Five to seven years old. Interesting. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's see what we got next. This is New Richmond Rye Cask Strength. So, number two, New Richmond Cask Strength. This is a Wisconsin distillery. Now, I bet this one was lower proof than the Polish rye. I had said, eh, I think it's 100 proof. I thought it was a rye bourbon. It's not, it's a uh, rye, rye. It's a rye rye. It's not bourbon, it's rye. So this definitely has more corn in it than the Polish rye, I would imagine, just by the profile, because this one is mellowed out. But it's also, it tastes young. And the estimated age on this that I'm reading is about four years old. So uh, is it, like I said, is it bad? No. Is it great? No. Would I buy a bottle? No. Um, I want to taste it when it's a little bit older. kind of reminds me of Pikesville, like similar kind of profile um, with that corny rye. But it needs some, needs some barrel time, I think. New Richmond is... Um, from 45th Parallel Distillery, which is in Richmond, Wisconsin. Which is, I have no idea. I have no idea where Richmond, Wisconsin is. I live in Milwaukee, which you know is southeast, very southeast Wisconsin. And Richmond, I'm bringing it up right now, town in Wisconsin. Turns out there's a Richmond, Wisconsin and a New Richmond. Get out of here. So New Richmond is close to Minneapolis, so on the far western edge of Wisconsin, uh, and you could throw a stone and be a Minnesota. All right. Okay, next one, number three. Let's keep it moving. Ugh, I don't have that much time. Number three is peerless small batch bourbon. So I'd said kind of funky, and as I said, come back to it too, I get more funk. It's kind of musty. It's got all kinds of flavors for sure. Not all of them are great, in my opinion. I've heard really good things about the Peerless Rye. This Peerless Bourbon is just interesting. I mean, I don't like it. <laughs> not that it tastes bad, but it's not a profile that I particularly enjoy. I mean, Wild Turkey has a funk. It's like taking the Wild Turkey funk and multiplying it times two. Uh, this is definitely not a finished product. Peerless, I don't think, has done any finishing. They're Kentucky-based, Louisville-based distillery. This is a ride bourbon. I think their mash bill is, I mean, it's medium rye, 10 to 20% or something. But this is a cask strength release too, or at least higher ABV blend. 110, I think, is what I read before. It's like a... I mean, I get I get oak, I get some char. I don't get a a lot of sweetness. I get some tobacco. 
I mean, I'm not going to rule this one out for y'all. Like, it's not a profile that I'm digging on right now. But I can see people like this if they're really into that. Kind of more drying char. Not heavily oaked, but drying char. And then kind of tobacco-y, funky, you know. Not bad. Again, not, not really for me, but... Not grotesque. It's not terribly off-putting. It's just weird, in my opinion. Fourth and finally for today is I gotta zoom in here. I'm I'm working off a picture of these bottles sent to me, and it's tough. Okay, so this looks like a. So it's Driftless Glen, Driftless Glen, which is out of Wisconsin, the Driftless region of Wisconsin, which is in the western half of the state, southwest. And it says, I think, 59 months aged, or maybe 54. So we're talking about between four and five years. Oh, gosh, guys. And I can't tell what the alcohol is. <laughs> Uh, it's too fuzzy. I've blown it up as big as I can. We're going to have to ask Matt. As I come back to this, I get some campfire on the nose. I get I get some fresh fresh wood more than I got initially. But the palate is very sweet. So I had a Driftless Glen pick before. And it was like particle board. Like it was not great. Did not like it. This one Brings a little bit more age than the one I had, which I think the one I had was sub four. Sub four years. This one, between four and five, looks like it's close to five. Has a lot more sweetness to it. And it's it's enjoyable, squad. Like, I, I like this. I like this a lot. I'm, I'm stoked now. Um, I've heard great things about Driftless. The one I tried didn't really jam on. But this one has uh, it's got some very redeemable qualities. Straight bourbon, single barrel, Driftless Glen, which, let's look it up, find what city they're in. Baraboo, Wisconsin, which is north of Madison. Not too far, actually, from uh, J. Henry Distillery, which I've liked what I've had from J. Henry, and I'm sure I will get to them. As we continue to progress through these 100 craft whiskeys in 2021, you know, who knows? I might go over 100. It really depends on how many I can procure. But, again, thanks to Matt for providing me with these four samples. Really, really interesting stuff here for sure. Stoked to try the Peerless. Been curious about it. Don't love it. Don't hate it either. I want more from the New Richmond. Really intrigued by this Polish rye from Cat's Eye in Iowa. Um, and then also really impressed by this Driftless Glen pick out of Baraboo. So a couple of Wisconsin whiskeys, keeping it super local, which is awesome. And I'm looking forward to many more here in the days to come. I've got a lot more in the lineup, so each week here we're going to knock out at least three, maybe as many as five. Who knows? If they stack up, we might shoot for 200. Let's, let's keep it at 100, though. Let's, we'll curb our enthusiasm for a little while here. If you like this video squad, please get down and like the video. Appreciate the support. If you're not already subscribed, you're gonna get a lot more whiskey content. You should go back and watch the video I released Monday. You know what, I'm gonna put it right here, one of these areas for you to click on and watch it, where we talked about Blantons. Like, what's the deal with Blantons? Like, it's one of the most hyped whiskeys ever. Is it good, is it bad, why is it hyped? I talk about that in the video, you should check it out for sure. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope you have a killer rest of your day. Stay healthy, stay safe, and remember to keep it neat.